listen to a story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> from a root cellar. This will make a dandy shelf. The good Lord provides for the purest heart. <laughs> bring it in, she. Bring it in. Were you talking to me, Miss Drysdale? You know very well I am. And I should have known that you were the thief who's been stealing my lumber. Now, now, hold on. I found this board right there at the foot of the steps on my own property. You're not only a thief, you're a liar. Now, that ain't a nice thing to call your next door neighbor, especially on such a pretty day. It hasn't been a pretty day since you became my next door neighbor. <laughs> you peasant. Miss Drysdale? I promised Jed I wouldn't scrap with you no more. Because like he said, you is city and I'm country. But we are sisters under the skin. Huh. Would you join me in a chorus of love lifted me, Sister Drysdale? Don't be absurd. And we're not sisters under the skin. You're commencing to get under mine. <laughs> but I'm offering you the hand of friendship. What do you say? I don't shake hands with brigands who pilfer my property. Now give me my lumber or I'll call the police and have you thrown in jail. I hope you're writing all this down. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, you done reviled and persecuted me. But I forgive you 70 times 7. And though you covet what's rightfully mine, I give it to you with a glad heart. Because the kind deed turneth away wrath. And pride goeth before a fall. <laughs> and her that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. For it is written, them that sows the wind will reap the whirlwind. But <laughs> him that pours the milk of human kindness into the churn of life. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Give me my lumber! <laughs> <laughs> So you've been cooking again, have you? Yes, sir. Special just for you. Well, would you look at that? Been a long time since I've seen one of these. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir, that's a dandy. What is it? Well, it's a sponge cake. And there's a glass of milk to dunk it in. Well, doggy, it's a sponge cake. Why, it's light as a feather. I bet you that rascal will really sop up the milk. Well, it ought to. I put four sponges in it. <laughs> Granny, what happened? Did you fall in the pond? I got knocked in the pond. Ellie, go fetch your Granny a blanket. Fetch my shotgun. What's for? For that big, fat, 
honorary daughter of Beelzebub next door. Now, Granny, you promised me no more scrapping. You promised me to abide in peace with Sister Dryde, did you? Please tell him what happened. Give him the sign. Suppose you tell me. Sure you are, Granny. I said fetch my shotgun. We're feuding with the Drysdales right down to the last man. Go get Jeffro. Granny, you keep this blanket around you. You're shaking from a chill. I'm shaking from my righteous wrath. <laughs> I'm going to smite that woman hip, thigh, and wishbone. Oh, no. Her family in the third and fourth generation will know the fury of my vengeance. Granny, why don't you offer Sister Drysdale the olive branch of peace? I offered her the olive branch. And she give me six foot of lumber. <laughs> I don't care if it was an accident. Now, you go over there and apologize to Granny. Apologize? I should call the police and demand an arrest. I'm not asking you to go to jail. Just apologize. Her arrest. She stole my lumber. When are you going to stop siding with those hillbillies against me? When you deposit $67 million in my bank. <laughs> That's only money. I'm your wife, your mate. For 27 years, I've shared your bed and board. Please, not while I'm eating. <laughs> oh, now, now, Margaret. This whole thing is just a tempest in a teapot. Let Granny have the wood. What's a few lousy pieces of lumber? They happen to be specially cut redwood planks to frame in my new dahlia beds. I'm determined to win first prize this year. Okay, okay, but promise, no more fighting with Granny. All right, if she leaves me alone, I'll leave her alone. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, good luck with your dad, you dear. Oh, I'm not depending on luck. I've engaged an expert to well, help me. fine, I hope he's just great. Uh, he should be. He charges $100 a day. Hundred dollars a day. Yeah, he's an expert. Yeah, so is Jesse James. Melvin, he has to recondition our soil. It's too acid. Give it a shot of bicarbonate. <laughs> now, if you think for one moment, I'm going to pay. Excuse me. Oh, come in, Miss Hathaway. Did you bring Mr. Ted? Indeed, I did. Who's Mr. Ted? He's the dahlia expert, dear. Do tell him. I'm paying a hundred bucks a day to some hothouse rosebud named Mr. Ted. Please keep your voice down, Chief. Mr. Ted is very temperamental. Oh, really? What's he going to do? Hit me with his purse? <laughs> listen. You listen, both of you. Oh, hello, Mr. Ted. Do come right in. So you're there. <laughs> Mr. Ted? <laughs> Oh, this is a real honor. I am her wife, her uh, husband. I'm glad to meet you. Yes, uh, Mrs. Drysdale, I would very much like to begin preparing the soil for your dahlia beds, uh, if you don't mind. That's fine, Mr. Ted. Now, I've brought along some humus and some bone meal. Well, if you need any extra bone meal, I've got it. <laughs> Jethro, have you seen your granny around? No, sir, could you? Hey, is there any more of that cake around? Any more? Did you eat the one that was here? Oh, yes, sir. How was it? Good, but springy. When I bit into it, it kind of fought back. <laughs> Funny thing about that cake, it was light as a feather going down, but the more milk I drink, the heavier it sits. <laughs> I think some of the threads from the flour sack got into it, too. On your feet, men. We're marching into battle again the Drysdale. I'm dog. Uncle Jet, we were just going to capture him and fetch him back here. Now, why would we want to do that? Have you seen their new upstairs maid? <laughs> now, listen, all of you. I know that Granny and Mrs. Drysdale has had a little run-in. Run-in? Why, I was mean-mouthed, bored, whomped, and pond-ducked. I called her sister. 
She called me thief and liar. I cast my bread upon the waters, and she sold me in after it. <laughs> Let's go feud. Yeah, well, hold on, hold on. Jed, we would have feuded for much less back in the hills. We ain't back in the hills. You gotta remember that city folks like Ms. Drysdale is much more loose with their talk. And somebody ought to button her lip. <laughs> Granny, it just could be that she's powerful sorry for what she said. Then why don't she come over and apologize? Uh, how about letting her send her maid? You <laughs> want We all know what a prideful woman she is. So, Granny, why don't you meet her halfway? No, I won't. <laughs> it put a star in your crown? Nothing to do. Granny, I know how much you like him singing. Now, why don't you let a hymn of happiness drive the hate from your heart? No. I know a dandy. One of your favorites. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got a joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Sing it, sister. Ten bucks a piece for Dahlia bulbs? Charlie, these are new and original varieties. We're going to put a different variety in each bed. At these prices, we should put them in my vault. <laughs> I'm to have the honor of naming them. Oh, how exciting. Isn't it? I've decided to name one for Daddy, one for Sonny, one for myself, and the fourth for the wonderful man that made all this possible. Oh, really? Yes. Mr. Ted. <laughs> Excuse me, Chief, you're wanted on the telephone. Now, since I'm paying Mr. Wonderful a hundred bucks a day, suppose you get him busy. We're ready for the groundbreaking ceremonies, Mr. Ted. Groundbreaking. I'm the one he's breaking. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Drysdale, I'm terribly sorry, but my shovel has disappeared. Well, that's strange. It was right there beside those redwood planks. <gasps> Wait a minute. I think I know where it might be. Mrs. Drysdale, I'm coming to meet you halfway. My heart is full of love and forgiveness. <laughs> That Jethro, always leaving tools strewn about. But I ain't gonna let it upset me. Cause I ain't got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. Cause I ain't got joy. Stop, thief! Well, Sister Drysdale, come to apologize, are you? You sorry you called me a thief? Yes. You're no thief. You're a kleptomaniac. Well. That's better. Now, let's join our voices in a hymn of happiness. <laughs> well, we got joy, joy, Give me joy. that shovel. Now, wait a minute. Is it yours? No, but I want it. Give it to me. Oh, please, sister. Don't lust after my shovel. <laughs> Let us song drive the demon of greed from your heart. Oh, we got joy, joy. Give me that. Sister, it'll purify your soul. Oh, oh we got joy. Did you meet Miss Dryden? Oh, yes, sir, down by the cement pond. It was a Mrs. song we done it. Let's sing her welcome, young Let's sister. Go. She's got the joy, 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 joy down in her heart. Down in her heart. Down in her heart. She's got the joy, joy, joy. <laughs> Granny, what happened? I got thrown in the water again. Did you sing to her? Joy, 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 joy. She still thrown you in? Right in the middle of the fourth joy. Maybe you were singing flat. <laughs> hey, wasn't no call to do that. You just be glad I ain't got three feet. <laughs> I tell you, Milburn, that little woman is a kleptomaniac. This time, she tried to steal Mr. Ted's shovel. With what I'm paying him, he can afford a new one. All you ever think of is money. Can't you understand that compared to the social graces, money is nothing? You could be committed for a statement like that. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Mr. Clavin. How are you? 
I'm fine, thank you, but I'm kind of worried about your wife. Well, frankly, so am I. <laughs> you did what? Threw Granny in a cement pond. Yes, sir, and I'm afraid she's going to dry out real mean. <laughs> she's about to swap her olive branch for a shotgun. I'll see that Margaret apologizes. I'll die first. Granny might arrange that. <laughs> of course, her gun's only loaded with rock salt and bacon rind, but that'll raise right smart of a well. Well, I'll warn Margaret. I'm not afraid of that little hillbilly hoodlum. Mr. Drysdale, I think I hear Granny coming. I'll do what I can to head her off, but I'm afraid the fat's in the fire. Bye. Well, Fats, you're in the fire. <laughs> Wilburn, will you stop being insulting and face the facts? That woman is a common thief, a scavenger. Mrs. Drysdale, I have apprehended the kleptomaniac. Ellie's chimp. <laughs> Are you sure? Caught her red-handed. She was going through the hedge with another redwood plank and the stallion bed marker. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Good work, Margaret. Oh. You confused Granny with his monkey. Now, are you going to apologize? Yes. I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> Funny. Now, you get over there and tell Granny you're sorry. I shall never humble myself before that vicious little harpy. Never. I ought to put her across my knee and... <laughs> What's this silly thing? It's a marker for one of the four dahlia beds. Daddy? Yes, she's naming that particular variety after her father. Oh, yes. Now, wait a minute. I've got an idea that just might appease Granny. She loves flowers. Margaret! Out of my way. I'm going to salt her hide and nail it to the barn door. Oh, oh Granny. Join me in a chorus, uh, Love Lifted Me. No more song, no more hymn. I raised my voice and she lowered the moon. I walked beside the still waters. And she told me in. <laughs> that poor city woman don't know nothing about feuding. She's about to get some on-the-job training. <laughs> well, leastways, it won't be no sneak attack. I warned them. <laughs> Come back dry. Ellie, fetch my jug. How'd your feud come over Miss Dry Dave? Jed, she run in a hired killer on me. Hired killer? I tell you, Jed, he's a giant. A Goliath. He stands nine or ten foot tall and has the strength of 40 mules. He grabbed my shotgun and bent it double. <laughs> You don't need no more of that. I ain't touched a drop. <laughs> Ellie, fetch Jethro and the rest of the guns. I need help. Now, yes, hold sir. on. You told us to stay out of that. You said this was tricks you and Miss Drysdale. That was before she run that Philistine in on me. <laughs> now, I tell you, Jed, he's a Goliath. I'll fetch my slingshot. <laughs> Even my shotgun didn't stop him. I tell you, Jed, he's so big. Then he can't walk through that door. Well, then stay in the house. You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> How's the feud going, Granny? Jethro, I need you. Fetch your gun and come with me. Yes, ma'am. Never mind the gun, boy. Oh, yeah, that's right, Granny. I'd rather fight that upstairs maid hand to hand. <laughs> right, and you got some eating to do. Well, hot dog. If there's one thing I like better than fighting, it's eating. You may have to do a little of both. Huh? Uh, well, where are we going? This here is parlor eating, boy. Don't leave me here to fight that giant alone. It's all right, Granny. Here's my slingshot. Ellie, I'm a scrapper, but I ain't no David. That 
Goomer is a good 12 foot tall. Show him to me. Oh, no, Ellie. I wouldn't go near him alone without the whole clan around me. And Jeb Stewart cavalry. <laughs> honey, you gonna spill, by it? Yeah, honey. You pour it for me. I don't want it to eat through the table. <laughs> I don't blind you, some trembling granny. Fellow 12 foot tall would scare anybody. Well, maybe he ain't 12 foot. <laughs> but he'll go eight or better. <laughs> well, I'm still big enough to scare you. Of course, maybe eight is stretching it a money. <laughs> but he's a good six feet and strong as an ox. <laughs> Where'd he go? I'll learn that little runt to bend my guns. Children, <laughs> please. I can't name Daddy's Dahlia after Granny. You can and you will. And the other three varieties will be named for the rest of the Clampets. No, no. Yes, yes. Either that or Mr. Ted and his bulbs go back to the hothouse. It will be a fine gesture, Mrs. Drysdale, one that will ensure peace in our time. <laughs> oh, hired hand gonna scare me. Turn that shite poke every way but loose. I'll hit him so hard it'll take him three days to walk back. <laughs> Digging graves. Four of them. <laughs> How's it going, Mr. Ted? Ah, uh, Mrs. Drysdale, I'm all ready to put them in. Uh, are those the markers? Yes. Ah, uh, good. And what are the names? Jed, Jethro, <laughs> Ellie, and Granny. <laughs> oh, yes, Granny. Is she the little old lady who shot at me? Yes. We'll put her right here. <laughs> Would you like to help plant them? May I? Of course. But remember, they must be buried with the eyes up. <laughs> sure you want to do this, Mrs. Drysdale? I'm afraid it's the only way to end the feud. <laughs> Not to sweet little innocent Ellie May and Jethro. Nor Jack neither. He ain't to blame. He tried to talk me out of it, but I wouldn't listen to him. I'm to blame. Take me and spare the others. Hold it dirt on me. Ready to pay for my sins. One last request. Plant me a mite deeper. I don't want the chicken scratching me up. <laughs> What's going on out here? It's all right, Mr. Drysdale. I'm crossing over Jordan with a song on my lips. I got it, joy, 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 joy. Get her out of there, yes. No. I'm willing to go, Mr. Drysdale, if you just fill in their mother's grave. Hey! Those are flower beds. Oh, Mrs. Drysdale and Mr. Ted are going to plant dahlias here. <laughs> you wouldn't josh a poor old corpse, would you? <laughs> oh, 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 Granny, Granny, don't be ridiculous. Granny, you all right? Hey, did you whip the Drysdale? And big old gold I done better than whip them. I showed them the light. Put their feet on the path of peace. They has done beat their swords into plowshares and plant flowers in my honor. <laughs> come in, you peace-loving Dahlia diggers, and come in and sit in.
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmwise presentation.